皆さん、こんばんは。私はマスキュー日本です。今日一緒に新しい日本中を飲めましょう。Hello everyone, this is Matthew in 日本 coming to you with yet another 日本酒 review. And today we are reviewing a very special Junmai Shu. But before we get started on the Junmai Shu, let me introduce the Sakagura. The Sakagura is called Niigata Nejo. And it is located in Ojia, Niigata. Now, Niigata is actually very famous for Nihonshu, for the most part because of the fact that it has many snow covered mountains in the area. And the snow helps produce a consistently cool temperature that fluctuates only slightly during the day and the night. So, it allows for a slower maturation process, which you know, can help with control of the end product. Now, The Sakagura is a fairly young Sakagura, all things considered. It was founded 70 years ago. However, for its youth, it has consistently won awards for its Daiginjo, which I very much intend to review in the future. Now, with that in mind, let's take a look at the Nihonshu. This is, as stated before, a Jonmaishu. Now, the semi boy or rice polish seems to be at about 68%. It's fermented to 17%, and the Nihonshu Do or sake meter value is at about 3, or positive 3, which means that this is a drier Nihonshu.、Uh, it is purported for having kind of a crisp, clean flavor. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the food pairing this evening. Now, today we are pairing edamame, yakitori, sweet and sour Chinese style pork, and finally, stir fry from the local supermarket. And now, without further ado, let's begin the pour. So, do, do, do. Ooh. There's almost a nice kiwi or Combination of kiwi and pear quality smell to it. I look forward to this one. All right, let's get started. Yeah, that's a definite. It's a definite kiwi, melon, maybe just a hint of citrus. It's amazing. First, you taste the melon, then there's just sort of a hint of、uh, the kiwi. Just the slightest aftertaste, sort of a zest. It just ooh, rolls up the tongue wonderfully. Oh, I like that. This is a good Junmaishu. Now, let's go ahead and pair it with some yakitori.
Ooh. That's interesting. Hmm. So with the yakitori, there's an almost... Almost a hint of butterscotch. Followed by a bit of the kiwi. Hmm. melon and the citrus is completely cut out of this but there's a little bit of the melon in the kiwi I think the kiwi has been somewhat undercut but that is that is delicious now let's try with the stir-fry <clears throat> Definitely more of a hint of the zest on this, this bit, but this uh, stir-fry is a little sweeter. The melon is there. Not quite as profound, but it is there. Let's give it another bite. Usually with drier Nihon shoes, Sweeter foods match better. Right, there's the slightest hint of uh, the zest with a bit of the kiwi. Hmm. Go ahead and try some of this uh, sweet and sour pork. That is interestingly bitter. The combination of the sweet here, this Junmai Shu is almost lime in quality, but not quite. A bit like a sort of a pickled bean. Not that that's bad, but I don't think this particular. It's. It's not the best pairing, probably because of the fact that it is both sweet and sour. And the sour just doesn't interact well with dryer Nihon shoes. It just isn't the best. Still, it was worth 
It was worth the effort. It was worth trying. Hmm. I'm glad I made the effort. So why don't we try some uh, edamame? Edamame. Butterscotch, followed by a hint of the citrus. I'm surprisingly not picking up as much of the melon as I expected, but I am enjoying that. I'm going to try, before we finish this video, one last bit of uh, yakitori, a different style. This is sort of a meatball. I'm going to see if that changes anything. Mmm. Mmm. This is less sweet, more hearty. Oh, yeah, there's the melon. There's the melon. Just for a moment before it kind of gets picked up by the citrusy qualities, but it is there. This is an interesting Genmai Shu. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure I trust the Nihon Shu Do that I read. I was trying to find as much information as I could, but unfortunately there just isn't that much information about this particular Sakagura on the internet. Even their official website doesn't list a lot of information beyond the fact that they're 70 years old and they come from Niigata. It's definitely not bad, but I think I might need to try this again in the future with a slightly different pairing to see how that works out, because I expected this to be more of a, a dry Nihonshu based on what I'd read. But it's it's still good. Uh, it matches well with the yakitori. It did pretty well with the stir fry. It did not do so with sweet and sour. Though I suspect for sweet and sour you would have to have a specially designed Nihonshu. It's just not something that I expect to work with 100% of the time, at least in terms of flavor profiles. You would have to have a Nihonshu that's kind of that's designed to appeal to both sweet and bitter. But all in all, this is a nice Nihonshu. It's not super complex, but it's enjoyable. I Almost, I, I actually definitely think it would be all right with a barbecue. If you got a good hamburger, good steak, you could probably enjoy this. It's not the sweetest Nihonshu in the world, but it's not the driest Nihonshu in the world. It's nuanced enough. I think it could work with both and give you a different, an interesting interaction. But uh, sometime in the next month or so, I plan to do a barbecue, and I will do some pairings and give you the feedback. With that aside... Let's go ahead and work on resolving this particular review. So, before anything, I would like to thank the members of the Nihonshu Nation and my viewers. I could not do this without you. And I always appreciate the feedback you give. Whether it's negative or positive, it's important to me to hear what you guys think. I want honesty from everyone at all times. So, thank you for that. I would also think, like to thank my friends at Nihonshu Nation and, or, sorry, my friends at Nihonshu TV. And I want to make a couple of announcements. So, first of all, uh, in about a couple of weeks, you can expect my first official interview 
with Nihon Chu TV. As I've said before, his channel is primarily in Japanese, but he speaks English. And we met and talked online recently, and we've made a plan to go onto each other's channels. I will interview him on my channel, he'll interview on me on his channel, and it should hopefully be a fairly interesting and entertaining video for you guys. But the other bit of information is that there is a friend of mine who I've known for a long time. She refers to herself as a Nihonshu evangelist. She runs a business where she teaches about food pairings and Nihonshu and the history of Nihonshu. She has contacts with a lot of the local sakagudas. And it's actually because of her that I started to get the idea of doing the Nihonshu reviews. And recently we met and we've decided that we are going to try to work together on a couple of projects. Possibly that can turn into even more projects. So I'm hoping and I'm intending that sometime in the next couple of weeks, I am going to go to a specific izakaya or bar that specializes in Nihonshu and do a special feature about that location with my friend. And I'll introduce her, I'll give her a chance to introduce herself so you can learn about her and learn about her interest in Nihonshu and see what she can teach us both, or all of us, rather, about it. But until then, I hope everyone's staying safe. I hope you're happy. And honestly, if you have time, why not try some of the Nihonshus that you can find? Do some food pairings of your own. See what works, what doesn't work, and see what you like. I am planning on giving you guys locations and information on specific stores where you might be able to buy some of the Nihon Shu, depending on where you're at. When it comes to alcohol, obviously, regions have different rules. But I intend to help you guys find that Nihon Shu. I want you to give it a try. Trust me, you might be surprised. And don't be afraid to try it with your own food. Food from different regions can match wonderfully. In fact, you might start seeing some special episodes where I specifically take Nihon Shus I've already reviewed against traditional Japanese food and start comparing them to foods from other regions, like Indian food, American food, Taiwanese, Korean food, German food, pretty much anything. I have already found... One Nihonshu that matches well with pizza. You might be able to look forward to that in the future. So, in the meantime, always be willing to try new things. Always be willing to go new places. Always be willing to ask questions. And most importantly, always be willing to go beyond the horizon. Until next time, everyone. This is Matthew and Nihon, and I wish you a good week. Take care. This week's Nihonshu was Koshino Kanshubai. You can see the label right there.